Hello everybody, good afternoon. I'm Jorge Serra. I'm a marketing professor here at AI Business School and welcome to this AI Entrepreneurs Experience, you know, a program that addresses all aspects of entrepreneurship. Uh, as you know, the AI Entrepreneurship Experience uh, is an initiative promoted by, by the Alumni Association, a project of the school that offers five large areas of uh, service to students and alumni, alumni sorry, in training and knowledge, professional development, networking, benefits and discounts. Uh, today we will talk about uh, uh, the roadmap for the roadmap for idea generation and to talk about this topic we have with us uh, Henry Menens who is a specialist in transformation and innovation. Uh, if you have any question during his presentation uh, you can use the, the hashtag that you, you are seeing in your screens that it's a hash AI conference and I will be checking it through Twitter and uh, translate uh, all this or uh, tell uh, Henry all the questions that you may have. Okay, uh, Henry, whenever okay. you want. Thank you very much, uh, George. Uh, also to you, uh, not just through Twitter, but also in this class, of course, whatever question you have, please ask directly. Okay, don't wait until the end. Uh, if there are too many, we will see, but, uh, but, but please do, okay? Uh, welcome, welcome uh, to this session on a roadmap for ID generation. It's a session actually as an introduction to design thinking, as it was said before. Uh, but before you can start with design thinking, actually there are some little steps before in your ideation uh, roadmap that we are going to consider in this session. Uh, we have a very interesting public here. We have, uh, we have people from the MBA, the executive MBA from human resources, uh, from different countries, from Europe and from outside of Europe. It's a diverse class and, uh, and it will be great to be with you on, on this topic of today. Okay, um, ID generation. When, when you think about ideas, uh, as you will notice, it will also be some question from me to you, not just from, from your side. Uh, ID generation, what, what come, uh, where? Ideas come from. Where do they come from? When, when an idea, business idea is generated in, for example, as they call it here, the TFM, uh, uh, the final, uh, the final project you do uh, at the end of your master's program. Uh, where do they come from? In, in a team. Some, some ideas. Is a uh, inside search, like what do the market need? Uh huh. Okay. Uh, they, can, they can come from client, from the public we want to sell those uh, product to. Uh huh. Exactly. Gabi. For solving problems, so we find a problem and then we want to give an answer for solving. Cool. Uh huh. Absolutely. Uh huh. And some other, some other suggestions where ideas come from. You know, it's. It's totally correct. All about what you said until now. It's answering to a problem, a need. It's uh, it's it's by doing research and finding out what's happening. Uh, it's studying a market, as you said before. But 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 my question then is, uh, where do you start searching? In what market are you going? And 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 when you are uh, finding out problems, where are you going to explore those problems? It's, it's quite, quite funny, but actually it sounds like all logical, almost like out of the book, no? uh, doing market research, finding out where to, to find your needs. But, but the question very often, and in, in, uh, I'm, I'm also a mentor in the AIA lab, the incubator of the business school, and, uh, and, and there when, when people come in with ideas and they tell how they came to their ideas, actually when I asked them was well actually by coincidence there was somebody uh, who had a problem himself and, 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 and he was walking through the supermarket, he couldn't find the products and so that was the first incentive how to, how to develop a solution for that problem. So very often the problem was not even found in the market but actually they identified themselves with, it, with that problem <laughs> or they were telling well my, my grandma she was always complaining about well whatever and then your team is thinking about how can we help that grandma, eh, uh, John's grandma. So the, 
Those are the coincidences, how you come to an idea. But if, if there is not a coincidence, if you just are sitting there as a team and thinking, okay, but where should we start? Where should we start? Deep diving, where should we start? You can start in the automobile uh, mobile uh, industry, you could start in the pharmacy industry, you could start in, in, the, well, uh, in the education sector, uh, you could start in whatever sector, ecosystem. So, so then the question is, my God, if there are thousands, millions of possibilities, it would be nice if there's some trick with a team, if you want to entrepreneur, uh, to start, isn't it? Some suggestions? Where could you start? So my question, where to start then? Some ideas. In your personal experience, in your emotion uh, with something and uh, in, the, in the feeling you have of uh, a lack or of uh, something to solve. Uh -huh. So uh, at least it's like a, a resolution on a problem, but you, in your feeling, no? Uh -huh. First? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Also, you have to sense the trend of what people is wanting uh -huh. to get, yeah. like ecological friendly or something like that right now. Totally correct. But there's the question again, eh? because personal is, is there, there is a, a clear start and eh? that's you or your team. But, but when you say uh, studying trends, then I would ask you where to study. I mean, there are millions of ecosystems. And so what, what, what then is the ecosystem where you study those trends? Because the trends are millions of trends, of course. And so there is the, the point we, we are going to, to solve today. Eh? Where, where, where are we going to start? Uh -huh. More ideas. Joseph. Uh, to identify the opportunity the market has with the demand. Uh -huh. uh, how big is the demand you can uh, identify how many options you can uh, penetrate in, in the market. Uh -huh. And there again, the question is, uh, what market? What market uh, are we starting uh, to explore? In uh -huh. a market that you identify, in a market that you are in constant uh, manipulation, uh, knowledge, and maybe that's why sometimes you identify there's a, a missing part in the market and you can make a, a hole. Uh -huh. you're, you're totally right. And, and, and it's as they all tell you in, in strategy and in marketing. Uh, but then again and again is the question and, 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 and what, what market then should we start to, to identify? Eh? Well, what, what's the reason later on? I think you can start at any market and then evolve Wow, if that will depends. be a lot of work, George. <laughs> that will situation. be a lot of work. Imagine thousands of markets and ecosystems and niches. I know, but just think about Amazon. It started uh -huh. like a bookstore and right now it's like a monster. That Absolutely. Do everything. Yeah, that's so a clear start. example of, of lean startup. Eh? You start with, with the first step, eh? a, a, a niche where you focus, where you learn, and then you step by step you're you're augmenting your business so you're totally right but that first choice and eh, that that in this case the books eh, where does it come from okay and that is the decision making process the the discovery the roadmap that we are going to study today uh -huh. um i have to say that in my case i i follow my own interest so if I exactly. listen to me, uh -huh. I can be working in a market that I'm interested in and it's going to be fun. I'm going to put all my effort because I like it. I have the passion and the motivation of hey, words I like. Uh -huh. that is, uh, Very good, Gabi. It's uh, Gabi is uh, to the public uh, that are listening outside. She's uh, she's having a lot of challenges and uh, and dreams in the in the world of education and uh, and, and training the trainers later on perhaps she tells us some more secrets she has uh, but but you're totally right you're you're, f you're you're following your own wishes and feelings and emotions and jason also was talking about his personal preferences so there we already have a a, a, a small first start what i'm pointing at because there is all the theory and all the beautiful techniques and, uh, and methodologies in, in, in search and in exploring markets, but the question is where to start. Okay, let's, let's just continue. Uh, just an example to, to where I'm going at, okay? The, 
the third edition of the EIE Lab, which is of course now a short announcement for, for all of you listening to this, uh, to this video. Uh, within uh, EIE uh, Business School, we have an incubator, uh, both in Barcelona and in Madrid. And, uh, and that incubating program uh, selects some startups to, 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 well, to, to elaborate their business idea into a feasible first MVP and then presenting uh, after five months their business idea to, uh, to a committee, an investment committee. Uh, when, they, when they join the incubator, I'm, I'm now uh, for two years a coach and a mentor in this incubator. When they, when they enter in that program, it's curious. You know, when they enter, they all have an idea. Actually, without an idea, you cannot enter in the incubator. But what's the curious thing is, is that we do not select the ideas, to be honest. We select the people. We just look at the teams and we look if they are able to all develop that idea, what they have brought to us in the first presentation, or even that they are able to make more out of it. Because the first idea actually mostly comes out of, a, as, I, as I said before, a, the, uh, I'm now mixing the Spanish and English, DFM, uh, well, a final project for your masters. Eh? And uh, uh, they, they, they sometimes uh, come from as an alumni and they, they bring in their their, their own company and they want to make it, let's say, a rethinking of the business model, but they bring in something that actually, actually hasn't met that roadmap that I'm going to share with you. They bring in something that is already cooked, it's ready, but actually they, they, they cannot justify 100% how they came to that idea. There is an exception perhaps one or two, but most of them, they came because it was an academic work or it was another pre-work and they just bring it in. And actually then when we face them with some techniques to, to see whether that idea they should really proceed with or not, then they suddenly see there is much more behind idea selection. So it's actually that, that EIE lab is like a restart. All, all uh, participants of the second promotion this year, they finish this month, they, they, they have uh, all reset completely their, their business idea or at least adjusted in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a quite uh, fierce way. So let us now just start once again. Where, where should we start? And normally when, when, when nowadays you ask whatever startup or company, uh, where, where are you starting? Uh, with uh, generating a solution to, as Gabi said before, to a problem that exists, well, mostly it's customer focus nowadays. I don't think I need to tell you, uh, since in, in all programs, I think that will be common stuff, that you learn about con con uh, customer-centric design, that you learn about customer-centric strategies, that you learn about customer-centric marketing, that everything nowadays should be customer-centric. So I'm not going to have a speech on that today. Uh, nevertheless, then again, the question is, but what customer, where is that customer and where should we start exploring and to find those customers? Okay, so it, it's clear that the start will be with your customer. And for that, we have customer centric design, which is another word for the design thinking, design thinking process. And actually design thinking is much more than just a process, design thinking Sorry, uh, the, the, I pushed some, uh, some buttons here on my computer. Okay, uh, coming back to this slide. Uh, design thinking is, uh, is, is much more than a methodology, a process. Design thinking is a culture. It's a culture that, that we want to establish within, uh, well, if you look to human resources, for example, even in human resources now, you see that one, 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 one trend is is, is establishing in a corporate culture, organizational culture, the design culture, as we also have nowadays the agile development culture, and especially technology firms, we see also that trend of, uh, of establishing a design culture. It's much more than a method, it's a philosophy. It's a way of thinking we want to, 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 to share with people that especially are concerned with the, uh, the design of solutions. Those solutions, they should, solve problems, they should solve uh, 
pains, actually. We, we, in English, we, we talk about pain statements, that you should define the pain statement. Where, where do you have the headache and, and, and then the, the challenges to take that headache away? That is design thinking about. And design thinking, so it's, it's, it's especially about empathy. It's, they very often also call it human-centered design because it's about creating empathy with, with your customer. It's understanding the, the customer, knowing what, is, uh, what are his pains. And, and, and by, by finding out, there are a lot of techniques, of course, and methodologies uh, in finding out. And, and when you find, find them out, you, you, you can present them through, for example, a customer journey, which is a technique in which you travel with the customer through a type of experience and then express what, what, he, what, what, is his, uh, what are his feelings and, 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 and what, what is he doing at that moment when he has that feelings. And it's about, you know, he's crying and you should cry with him. The more you cry with him, you're understanding him and you can help him. Because in business nowadays, it's about helping. And that's why you see in that lot of communications like web pages, we help our clients with, and then there comes the value proposition. By the way, value proposition, I, 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 I'm not just mentioning that term, uh, and, and, and you hear it a lot nowadays, I think also in your courses, during your studies, value proposition. Somebody can tell me what a value proposition is? George, again, tell us. I think it's to add something that maybe doesn't exist right now. And just to add it, it attracts the customers. Uh -huh. A value added, OK. Somebody more. It's what makes Come you on. unique as a business. That's your unique value proposition. What makes you different? What what you offer, what makes your offering different from the different. rest, uh -huh. or what already exists. Okay, cool. Uh -huh. Actually, yesterday we had the session in Spanish, the same session, and, and they said exactly the same. A value added, the delivery, and a differentiated delivery. What, what more, Gabby, Gabby? I'm not sure if I'm right, but I can do a relation with something that um, the teacher told us about, it have to be something that you can change. So it's a value that everybody has a lot of ideas, but if it are so utopic, you cannot use it. Okay. It's a value proposition when you can use it and change something. Uh -huh. And that's, that give it the value okay. and a proposition. Let's call and that something, eh? To, to, to speak more in terms of design thinking, let's call that something experience. Okay, so we, what we want is to improve an experience. Hey, you can call it a cha uh, change, but change is very aggressive nowadays. They, they, they rather prefer to call it improve. Sounds, sounds nicer, or, although you're doing exactly the same. You're changing, of course, when you, may, when you improve it. And, and, and so you're improving, uh, you try to improve an experience, uh, to, 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 to design a better experience because why better? Because people are complaining, people are crying. Uh, they are crying about certain pains they feel during experience. Okay. Nowadays, customer experience is uh, is very fashionable. You know, it's not, but it's fashion. It's a trend, but it's not blah blah blah. It's not like you know, uh, well, we have something new. A term. Let's throw for th two years, and then we have something new again. No, actually, it's total reality. We need it. We need to focus on customer experiences because our clients, they become more and more, um, let's say, implicated in, 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 the, in the products and services we have in our society. They, they do not just assume and accept what, what there is and what, what, what the market offers. They, they, they are just requiring uh, uh, products that, that totally delivers what they want and what answers to their experiences and feelings. And if not, they go to somebody else and, I, and competition is extremely fierce compared with some years ago and that all you have learned probably in, in, in your different classes you had uh, before. And because of that uh, fierce competition, just only because of the technology and internet we have, we have a global uh, economy, a global uh, 
a global uh, competition and so we have to think about uh, how to differentiate and that is what, what Scala is mentioning, how can we differentiate from our competition to bring in value for our customers. So indeed, it's not just about what Gabby is saying, that you are uh, delivering value and delivering value actually means uh, taking away a problem, uh, but, but also in a differentiated way so that the customer feels, hey, I have something different than the competitor is feeling there, uh, offering there. And so uh, that differentiated and problem solving character both is entering in your value proposition. Okay, so you have a value proposition. That is actually, if you, if you look at this slide, we, we see here, uh, we see here six steps which define the design thinking process. Uh, uh, and actually these six steps still can be divided in, in three, three uh, phases. And, and although it's not in this picture, I, tell, I, I first uh, tell you about the three phases of design thinking. It's very standard, okay? The, the first phase is the exploration phase. Sometimes I also call it the inspiration phase, okay? So the exploration phase, what you do is that when you finally have decided where to start, which actually is the objective of, 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 of this session today, and, and later on we come back to that point, okay? When you finally decide where to start, then there you are going to explore. You have defined for yourself an ecosystem with different stakeholders, and you're going to study those stakeholders, what problems each of them have, if they have problems, and if they have problems, what problems are you interested most to take them away? and they become your clients because the definition of a client is that stakeholder that has a problem and you are able to take that away and that becomes your client. And sometimes there are more stakeholders with more problems and even you want them serve them all with taking all of those problems away and then there comes the trick, the, the, tr the trend of lean startup and saying, okay, don't, let's, uh, don't uh, do everything uh, at once, but start with, with one a stakeholder eh? and then step by step as you taught me before with the Amazon model and then you expand your business by focusing on more stakeholders and that makes it also a scalable model which is just a good thing. You learn about the first step, you make it better and you amplify your business with the next steps. So coming back, you explore, you explore your stakeholders, your, your ecosystem, you define some problems, and at the end you say, okay, that customer with that problem, I'm going to help. Helping, that is the key word in design thinking and, and business design. You're helping your customer taking your problem away. Now, if the problem, for example, is with Google search, that companies do not have enough online presence, a uh, very simple uh, example, then your value proposition is, well, we are going to help these companies to augment their online presence. That is a value proposition, okay? So a value proposition is not, well, you pay us $10 and you will be on the top of the list in searches. That is the solution. That is the service you're offering, okay? But the value proposition is actually the opposite of the problem. We do not have enough online presence, so what do you offer? You offer them to help them to augment their online presence. And you are still not saying how. So that is interesting because in marketing, uh, I don't know nowadays uh, what, 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 what you learn in marketing classes, but when I had marketing at university and at business school later, when I had marketing, they told me, uh, what are you doing, what are you offering, and that were your products and services. In what business are you? And you tell them about your products and services. And actually, as, they, as once a, a, a Spaniard told me uh, some years ago, actually what we have done for years, he told me, in Spain is, is that there is a stand with products and, 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 and we are just pushing that into the market. We are, we are selling them a catalog and we are presenting them our catalog. And so if you uh, saw some years ago a communication of companies, you saw a catalog and you saw the different products. And nowadays, if you see a corporate video, a communication, you don't see a catalog anymore. Well, some companies still do. They still have to come to these sessions and classes. Mm -hmm. 
but 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 most companies nowadays they sell value propositions and they tell in video corp uh, in corporate videos or they tell in sales pitches how they can help their customers but actually i'm already saying how they can help actually first they tell them that they can help their customers and then by mentioning their customer uh, their value proposition and then if the customer asks okay and then how are you going to do that the how there your product and service comes especially in technology very often the technology solution is is less interesting because it's very complex and very uh, chinese very often are there some chinese listening no it's it's just you know it's 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 sometimes not necessary to go in detail about what the final solution is what is important in your communication and your pitch is that you are going to help them you connect with them through empathy detect their problem and then you deliver a value proposition okay and that's the first phase you do in design thinking your exploration phase you find those customers you find their problems and you define your value proposition now gets now we get to the second phase and that's the known phase everybody starts normally with and that's the ideation phase very typical nowadays you still see business plan competitions at some universities not this one of course but but uh, at some universities you still see or government business plan competitions where they ask still a business plan where they ask still still uh, for 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 complete ideas developed and actually what 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 is actually just is important in the beginning is that you present and you should present on what challenge are you focusing and how are you going to uh, and, and 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 what is your value proposition you're going to help these and these and these uh, people with their problems and 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 some some let's say tiny business model behind that's enough in the beginning and then later on through a program you can develop it in an ideation phase in design thinking you are going to develop that solution so in the first phase an exploration phase you finalize with a value proposition and in the second phase then you're going to find the solution how you're going to take the problem away okay so in the ideation phase we'll see later on at the end of the session uh, what are the different steps you can do in that in that phase and that will also be the contents of the next online session we will have in uh, in March okay uh, now we concentrate on on what should we do before starting with the ex exploration phase so in, 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 in a couple of minutes I'm coming back to that all right now it, after the ideation phase where you developed your solution where you developed a, a business model behind that solution then you are going to prototype to 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 iterate several times to have a final solution that you're satisfied with and more more even important is that the customer is satisfied with satisfied with and then and then at the end you're going to implement and that's the third phase you're going to implement that solution all right so that's the design thinking process now if you look to this beautiful model that i think you have seen already like thousands times in your your different classes during during the masters uh, you're all in is the business model canvas of alex osterwalder uh, i don't need to explain that i think to you but 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 i just put this in this presentation because actually what you see in this in this slide, uh, the business model canvas, with that arrow from, from the right side, is that he explains exactly the same as design thinking does, that what you see is from a customer segment where you do an exploration, where you detect some problems, you finally will define a value proposition you see in the middle of the canvas, and you deliver that through channels and with the customer relationship through your customer okay that's the way they teach you out from those books okay but the question again here is but what customer segment and they don't tell you in the book and they just tell you okay you have to define your customer segment you have to de define your 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 target group you even could 
uh, specify a, a little bit more to make it, uh, well, you could combine, let's say, design thinking techniques with, uh, with this tool from Alex Osterwaller and saying, okay, let's define a persona. Persona is, is the representation, the personal representation of the, the stakeholder you're connecting with, you're empathizing with. So let's say persona is Barbara, and Barbara works at the uh, innovation department in Carrefour, uh, a, a, re a French retail you all know, of course. Uh, let suppose Barbara uh, has 37 years, uh, and she, she works with Tom, which is a supervisor, and they both detect a problem with uh, some buyers in the bio segment from Carrefour. At that moment, at that moment, you specify more even what is your customer segment by representing it with a persona. But how did you come to Barbara? And how did you choose retail? That's still the question again, okay? Now, so where should we start exploring? No. So in, in, in general, we have some steps we can do before the design thinking process that officially doesn't uh, isn't a part of the design thinking process itself, but I think it's necessary to go through before starting with the actual design thinking process we are tackle in the uh, we are going to tackle in the next session. So I'm going to tell you a little story uh, to, to to see how to deal with that first step before the design thinking process, which is based on a metaphor I learned from uh, an Indian woman called Sara Sarasbati. Somebody knows Sara Sarasbati? No? She is, as I say here in Spain, un crack. She is, uh, she's great. She's, uh, she's a professor at uh, Babson College. Uh, actually, uh, in terms of uh, entrepreneurship and innovation, the number one in the world, uh, even more than Stanford, Harvard, MIT. Um, and, 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 and she wrote uh, quite some time ago a thesis uh, on a 10 years research on the super entrepreneur, which is very recommendable to read, but, but perhaps not the scientific thesis, but some spin-off articles that came out of that thesis. I'll come back to that in a couple of minutes, okay? Um, Sara Sarasbati, she did a research together with Herbert Simon with a uh, Nobel Prize on what are the typical characteristics of a super entrepreneur? And she studied for 10 years the, the different um, characteristic developments, ways of thinking, ways of acting of those super entrepreneurs. And she came to five different principles. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell now about those five principles because then we will need two days more. And, uh, but I really can recommend you to to, to read a little bit more about, uh, about those principles that are summarized by the concepts called effectuation. Effectuation is a philosophy, another way of entrepreneurial thinking she defends in, based on, on that uh, research she did. And it's interesting because uh, she came with principles, they sound logic, but almost no entrepreneur does them. And it's, uh, it's, it's very special if you're going to read. It's, it's not that common yet. In some countries like mine in Holland, effectuation is quite integrated in, in, in a lot of multinational companies. Also in Germany, in Switzerland, in Austria, in the United States. But in a lot of countries, it's still, uh, it's still a green thing. That, sh that should be developed a little bit more in, into corporate culture and on especially entrepreneurial culture. And so, effectuation has five principles. I'm going to uh, focus just on one principle, which is, the call, which is called the burden hand principle. And the burden hand principle, I can uh, tell you by the metaphor uh, Sara Sarasbati, when I met her in a conference, she told me, entrepreneurship is like cooking. Entrepreneurship is like preparing a meal. Entrepreneurship, well, it's like, imagine you're driving home from work. Uh, imagine, and, and, and you're thinking, my God, what I'm going to, to, to eat later on at home? What, what I'm going to have for dinner? And you're thinking and thinking and well, and, and then finally you say, oh my God, yeah, I, I got that recipe from my, from my friend yesterday. 
a, a delicious pasta with uh, with seafood and, and and some other delicious stuff and and you're thinking about a recipe you, uh, well a very special recipe actually so you come home you open your uh, uh, your refrigerator and uh, like like in my case there is nothing but nothing in that refrigerator some products and that's it and uh, and then so the only thing you can do is going shopping and hope that you can find all these ingredients you got from the recipe from your friend and some special products really in that recipe you even cannot find in, in, in one or two shops so you have to go to different shops and at the end you come home and you even forgot one thing because you couldn't find it and at the end so it costs a lot of time and money to have that final final recipe cooked at home okay now the other version you're driving again and uh, it takes an hour getting home uh, you're in a traffic jam even and 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 but you're doing other thing you're you're watching the news of course what watch out you don't watch if, if you're driving it but but you're watching the news because you're you're just there not driving you're stopped there and uh, and then you're 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 thinking about what you're going to do this weekend you're you're planning your holidays you're thinking about an article you read earlier that day but you're not thinking about the food you're having that evening why because you know when you arrive at home you open that same refrigerator and again there are not a lot of products in it and you take out those few products you find and you're going just to make something out of that and curiously i don't know if you had that experience before but curiously if you then finish that meal and you you have even presented sometimes to 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 friends you haven't told them what what you what you actually did in that uh, uh, what you put in that meal and and you're finally you're extremely surprised that actually you had a quite you had a quite good meal and actually your 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 uh, your friends that visited you also said my god that was delicious well, what 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 was it and so very often with very very tiny ingredients and limited ingredients and without shopping and losing a lot of time you can got you can come to good results and that is the burden hand principle from Sara Sarasbati and actually all those super entrepreneurs had that in common like also the other four principles you can read about but if you read about it uh, read uh, a first introductory book which is called effectual entrepreneurship from Stuart Reed Stuart Reed is a professor, an American professor at uh, uh, EMD. It's a business school in Lausanne, Switzerland. And he worked together with Sarah Sarasbati and he translated, let's say, that scientific uh, precious uh, research into, a, let's say, a, a, a pragmatic book for entrepreneurs and how to learn from these effectual principles in your daily work as an entrepreneur. It's really recommendable, okay? Now, coming back so entrepreneurship could be much more simple and then coming back to that to that canvas you could read that canvas from the other side if you see whatever class video presentation or even the book itself on how to use and how to present the canvas you never will learn to start at the left side you never will because what you learn is when you start from the right side you define what problem my customer has what value proposition you will deliver and what you will do in terms of marketing what channels what what customer relationship promotion mix etc you will have and then what resources will i need for that what activities will i do for uh, do need for that and what partners should i know for delivering that value proposition so it's actually it's afterwards what do i need for it and then very often very often you see that's actually not that feasible as you thought before you will have a lot of surprises later on because you haven't thought about do i have all of these personally on my team or do i know these partners or do i have sufficient resources even uh, during crisis when actually effectuation in some countries became very popular that was one of the the reasons why effectuation turned up because the crisis uh, created a, a period of uncertainty and a period in of scarcity in which banks didn't give you a loan that easily anymore. So, 
So it wasn't anymore uh, like, uh, well, uh, I'm thinking about this business model and now I need this. Now, effectuation is, is telling you, well, you have this and let's see what can we cook with it. Okay? Now, so that's the, the, the other way around with the bird in hand principle. And now that bird in hand principle, I want to expand a little bit more. Because until now, if you see this canvas, we talk about what resources do we have? What skills, and that's well, like Jason already was saying a little bit, eh, when I think personally what I'm good at, starting with myself and my feelings, and what Gabby was saying before also, well, I actually follow my own instinct and, and my feelings and my knowledge and experience. Well, that actually fits in this same factual thinking, because you're thinking about the left side, and eh, what activities are you good at, what skills and competence do you have, what resources do I have? What knowledge do I have? What partners do I already know? And, and, and nowadays the, the partnering is cool. It's that easy. You take your LinkedIn and, uh, or you're taking well, what other social network and you can connect very easily. And, and, but, but it's thinking about what you already have and not you should know. And take advantage much more out of that because most, it's surprisingly, whatever entrepreneurial program I'm at, in Spain, outside of Spain, it's always the same. They do not start with that. They already start about brainstorming about the most beautiful ideas and ecosystems. They even weren't there very often. So just start by yourself first, okay? And your connection, it's not about you, you as a person, but also you, you as a team. So for that, I made a map and you cannot find that map uh, and, I, and I cannot find the time to publish that map. Perhaps there will, <laughs> there will be a moment uh, this year that I can share it with you through publication. But, but the, this map, I call it the context mapping. And this context mapping is a very simple thing. It's a very logic and obvious thing when you now hear everything. But it's something like the effectuation research from Sara Sarasbati. Actually, nobody does. And that is starting with yourself, starting with your team, finding out each of them, what competences do we have, what resources and network do we have, you and your team, and find the common points, uh, see what, 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 what do you have in common, to squeeze, to, to take advantage of it, okay? And not just, it's about competence, resource and network, what you can find in the canvas, but then I, I expand it still with two more things. Well, actually, Gabby already mentioned one, one of these things, and she was talking about passion before. Well, passion, your passions, they all also can influence your context. And so, eh, as you were telling, I, 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 I let me guide by my passion and what I'm, what I'm not just good at, but also what I'm f f uh, passionate about. And beside passion, we have what I call wishes. Sometimes I also call it in some other sessions, uh, especially in incubating, uh, uh, in, 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 in the incubator in some sessions, I call it cornerstones, the cornerstones of your future business when designing your business. And the cornerstones are th those building stones that, that, that are your personal requirements and the team's requirements you want to see at least in your company, at least. So let, let me give you some examples of what I mean with that. Um, I would like to work with an international team later on. I would like to work with people from around the world, like Pablo, for example, he's excited about this international business program he's studying at now, and he meets people from 18 different nationalities. And he's thinking now, well, that would be cool also later on in my startup, actually having people from around the world, and not just from my own country. And that would be a cornerstone for my business, okay? Or another person says, okay, uh, I'm American, I'm living in Spain, but I want to have later on, because I've got my experience, my luggage from the States, I want to have American clients later on. I still do, do not know what ecosystem, what, what what, uh, what, what segment, what problem, whatever, but I want to, to work for Americans. They, they, they become my clients and take advantage of the knowledge and contacts I have in the States, okay? 
And another one says, okay, for me, the most important thing is that we have fun at work. And uh, when I close my eyes, I see an office at the beach. Uh, somebody else says, well, I want my office at the beach. Like me, for example, my, my next business absolutely will be at the beach. Here in Barcelona, even. I have to talk later on with George. And, uh, and the thing is, so everybody has his own wishes, a dream. And you do best by taking, like, say, two long drinks, closing your eyes then, feel happy, and think about your dream, your future business with its cornerstones. How can you imagine your business? And think about the atmosphere, think about its people, think about everything you can imagine, uh, like also what you would like to do in that. Uh, uh, I see myself as uh, whatever business I will have, but I see myself as uh, the person that uh, created the, the, the dynamics, for example, within the company. Or I see myself uh, traveling all the time. I love traveling and I want to continue traveling in my business, whatever. But define the things you want. Now, coming back to your team, imagine you use these techniques now in, at your final work uh, within your studies. Then you are going to find out what all members have as w their wishes and have as their competences, resources and network. Now, the, the box in the top with competences, resources and network, you should find the complementary building stones. Because the more you have, the better it is. And you just have a luggage, you can a broader and a uh, luggage you can work with. And with the box below, you have to find the common denominators. So it, you have to find out what passions do we have in common? What wishes do we have in common? Because if you do not have, have anything in common, you just will have conflicts. And yesterday, for example, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Spanish version of this session, we, uh, one, uh, one uh, student, he asked, okay, we have, we have quite some challenges, he called it. It's good, never call it problems, conflict, call it challenges. But we have quite some challenges uh, in our team because one is getting a job and, uh, and, and, and while we are still working on, on our final project, he's already thinking on his job. Well, if he hasn't any of his wishes and passions in that team, he will be distracted and just focused on, on that new work, that new job. While if there are quite some wishes and passions already represented in that business idea, he will be totally differently committed to that business idea. Well, of course, this is just your academic project, but in real life and with your entrepreneur, entrepreneurial project will be totally different because then you have to think okay uh, if we are not going to have a business in which we all feel happy and we all have in one way uh, that we share a passion that we have our wishes more or less cannot cannot find the idea what you will have all your wishes all the team represented then find all different common denominators and out of these you're going to define your ecosystem because that's that's the start you have to to make before defining where to explore that's i'm going that's what we are going to work at okay now if you have these boxes that you study on yourself each of you on yourself then you sit together as a team and then you even, if you already have some partners in mind, you could even do that with your partners and to find out what are their competences and what are their resources and network. Well, sometimes it's important also to, to see what passion and wishes they have, but it's mostly the upper box that is important with the partners. And then at the end, you can do an exercise that comes from Blue Ocean Strategy. It's the ERIC grid. You all know probably out of your classes or or at least I think the MBA and executive MBA students will have had that in their, in their classes, Blue Ocean Strategy, in which, in which you eliminate, the E from eliminate, in which you are reduce, in which you increase, in which you create new elements. That means 
that you, with the competences, with the different wishes, with all these elements we were talking about before, you're going to say, okay, what do we eliminate? What, so with other words, we, 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 we skip on that, we don't take it in our final selection. What do we reduce because we see other things more important? What do we try even to augment? Or even are there other cornerstones who would like to add? And at the end, you come up with a set, what I call a context map, which with you are going to start your ecosystem. Well, start means that you define where to start. Okay, because you have to find an ecosystem where you're going to explore what, what responds to that context mapping. Because if you're going to, to explore in an ecosystem which doesn't have anything of what you have uh, research about in your context map, you will have a huge problem later on when you have to find the resources later on for, 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 for being able to develop that uh, business the competence you have and it appears that actually you do not have enough competences and you still have to amplify your team because the team hasn't all of the competences that a business idea needs and actually as you all know uh, investment teams uh, uh, in, the, in the past I also worked uh, within a platform in, in Holland and, and was uh, also a member of, a, of an investment committee on business plans and the first thing we we uh, studied wasn't the finance but was the team behind the idea and so uh, this all is very important to to make your team ready to be able to to ex execute your business idea okay and then there is still that that uh, uh, that that that, that uh, uh, picture the money meter for some people it's important to earn a lot of money and for some people, it's less important. There are people that say, okay, for me, the most important thing is to help people uh, or to help even society or group in society. And for me, that's the most important thing. And if you can earn some money with it, great. And some other people say, no, no, for me, the most important thing is that I want to make a lot of pasta, as they say here in Spain. And some other, they can balance between both. So you have to find it out also for yourself in your team and how you think about that and, and take a common ambition level on that topic. Together with that ambition level of the, within the money meter and the context map you did before, you then define, okay, now where shall we start? And to see continuously then, if you have defined where to start through that design process, what we are going to see in, in our next session, if at the end your context map is aligned not just in the beginning when you start but also when you continue by exploring is it still aligned is it still answering to my context map and then you're going to ideate on your solution is it still responding on my context map are my wishes still presented is my team still satisfied is my still my team still able to do it with their competences, skills, resources, partners, contacts, everything. And is it also answering to our ambition level regarding the money meter? And this helps you a little bit in the question where to start. Because it sounds that logic. Every, everybody at the end has a business idea, but one of the failures that you actually don't hear that much because mo mostly when you hear presentations about the failures of, uh, of entrepreneurship is, is or it's about money or it's about the team, they call it that. Well, it's uh, el equipo que fracaso. And, 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 and at that moment, they, but they don't tell you then what's behind it. What's behind it and very often what's behind it is what I call the context map, that it's not okay, it's not aligned with your business. And so first, when you start with your design process, try to initiate that context mapping process in your team. Also try try have at least two people instead of just alone in, uh, in your challenges, in your business challenges, and, uh, and, 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 and pairing and, and debating uh, among, among those team members, you will come 
to interesting, interesting conclusions because what we had this year, uh, we had uh, eight beautiful uh, startups in, uh, in the incubator uh, and they, they, they entered all with an idea, but we faced them with the context map and they, some of them, they reset it completely and some of them, they adjusted, but in a fierce way, their business idea. And hope, and, and luckily actually, because if they just didn't, then probably in some years or even in some months, they would have had a problem later on, okay? Now, just one comment still be, uh, before closing this presentation, and that is the, the, the huge confusion between the first and the second phase of the design process. We are going to explore more about that next session, but I, I still want to emphasize that the exploration phase is not about exploring ideas. Okay, so, so when you have made that context mapping, then it's about exploring problems first. Okay, you're not directly starting with ideas. Okay, because an idea is an idea for solution. An idea is not an idea for a problem. Remember that, okay? Because it's, it's, a, it's a very common confusion. You see that in all, all programs, both academic as also incubating programs, where students are exploring ideas. But please focus that you're, when you have done your context mapping, that you then are going to explore the problems in your ecosystem of choice where you then are going to, uh, what to f uh, define a value proposition first. And then the next phase, and the third circle here in this picture, then you're going to ideate, to ideate on a solution for that problem. Remember that, okay? And on that next session in March, the 4th and the 5th of March, we are going to, to elaborate a little bit more on the ideation phase. So then we are going to see, okay, how to define, well, how to develop that solution. Uh, when we came, when we have come to a solution, we are going to define a business model behind it. So instead of a ham, a hamazon. Okay, and then, and also that hamazon still can be much more out of the box as they have done it now also in the, in the, in the, in the last couple of years. And, 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 and so we will learn about some creativity techniques that can boost even your ideation process. And after a first business model and solution, then you still have to see what Carla said before, that it should be differentiated. Not just a value proposition you said before, but also your solution. And so how to differentiate, we will see through a model that is called the Dublin model. It's a, uh, it's a model about 10 different ways how you can differentiate your business model from your competition. And then we'll see that it's necessary to do some feasibility study. Feasibility is much more than finance, we'll see in that session. Feasibility is seen in six different dimensions in how, at the end, your business model should be feasible that it will end up with some money at the end, okay? And at the end, your business model also should be scalable. That's something in the incubator. We are watching it that at the end, all business models, all business <coughs> solutions can have impact. <laughs> and for that, they must be scalable. Okay, not just a, a one moment solution and that's it. Okay, so also we will see what ways are there to make your business model scalable. And that will be the content for next session. Any questions, people? Jason. Uh, I would like to a question about uh, the explore your stakeholders. Uh, I'm, I'm working in, uh, as an engineer and uh, architect for solution, informatic solution. And uh, one thing they always say to me is don't give them what they want, uh -huh. give them what they need. And it's occur that sometimes that the stakeholder don't have a, a real idea of what you need. I, I will take another example of uh, something I, I have uh, a, an exercise uh, we, we had uh, in uh, uh, logistic. And it was about the city pack. City pack is a system you can have your, uh, your um, what, what you um, buy. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they, they give you a, a place 
So to take it there. Exactly. It seems a very good idea, but you, you can ask yourself, well, but in uh, something like one year, would it be useful? Because we will have a lot of way to, uh, to figure where you are and give you at the, at the place you are. Uh -huh. I mean, so, so ideas like those uh -huh. can be uh, erroneous good ideas. Uh -huh. How you find them? Uh -huh. Interesting. Uh, thank you, Jason. That's a good question. You know, first of all, uh, I don't say what I need or uh, what I want, but I always, because very often your clients even don't know what they need. And uh, so the only thing what they know, mostly at least, or if not, we help them to discover, is what the, is their problem, but not what they need or what they want, what you say. And so because, uh, just an example, uh, when there wasn't a car, the people didn't know that they wanted a car. Okay, because they couldn't think about it. Okay, that was a solution at the end that, that, that came out of a development. But, but before that design process, people just had horses and they didn't know that they will f f uh, finish up with a, with a car. So they didn't need a car, they didn't want a car, okay? So it's very important in design thinking to forget about needs and, peop and what they want. Okay, that's the first, first answer, okay? And second, okay, then you have to find out what is their problem. And for that, there are many, many, many techniques. Well, for example, uh, I'm a coordinator in EIE from a, uh, uh, from a design thinking boot camp in Madrid and where we have three months we, on a weekly base uh, classes on, on, on uh, also uh, working on a, on a real project uh, where, where people find out through different techniques on service design or business design and even experience design and visualizing at the end with a, with the first app, for example, your your visit, they discover what techniques are there to 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 go through that process of design thinking, and a lot of techniques in how you can find out problems without influencing from one side, uh, because you shouldn't, you just should empathize with them, but not influence, and uh, and 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 my recommendation is uh, well, first of all, we can uh, talk after class uh, still if you're interested in this, that I can give you some resources on it. And we could also say, uh, for example, uh, with the organization of these sessions that we can uh, put still some resources also on the, on the internet regarding this topic, okay? But it's, uh, it's very important to study some techniques. And, and now there isn't time enough to, to go into these techniques. But there are techniques in, in, in which you can guide your, your stakeholder in, 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 in discovering step by step their, 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 their real feelings and problems and at the end come up with a, a problem and value proposition that then will lead you through a better solution than that it was formulated like as you say before what do they want what would they need because then they start directly those people with the ideation process what I said before not with the exploration process okay all right Jason thanks other questions? <laughs> okay. uh, I, I just, just another question because I, I met a company and uh, we were two at the beginning and we had something like a very good idea, but it was a good idea of two pe person. No? Uh -huh. And we had very um, uh, high level of confirmation BA, which is you think it's a good idea and your friend also. So <laughs> at the end, some, sometimes it's very difficult to, uh, to have this distance uh -huh. uh, we should have. Is, is there, not, not a method, but um, I, I was thinking of a type of mantra, no? Something we have to always think about to avoid being uh, uh, captured by all proper ideas, because sometimes it's a trap. Mm -hmm. Totally, <laughs> I totally agree. Uh, first of all, most teams... Actually, I haven't mentioned in this session. Thank you by mentioning this, because then I can still mention now, is that most teams, they come uh, because some friends, they, they got together, or sometimes in family, uh, businesses started, uh, sometimes out from, uh, let's say, some colleague students that start a, a final project and then continue with it, or that uh, some, some, some people from different 
communities, but they bring in capital together, and so it's based on capital. But it's almost never based on, let's say, finding the right competencies together to, to build the business idea. And, uh, and, and but because it's a natural process that we, that we stick to people that we like and, and that we first think, well, that would be nice to, with my friend to, to start something. Or, but it's not about, mostly it's not about competencies. So directly you will have that situation, as Jason uh, talks about, that, that at the end when you're driving an idea into a, a direction that you can have some, some like, say, uh, uh, automatic fall in love process because you, you, you were convinced this works, but it wasn't based on, on let, let's say, the story of the context mapping we did before. So uh, what could you do still to rethink rethink the uh, uh, both business model you're in or even uh, to, to, to look for a new restart uh, with uh, expanding some, some, some additional value propositions is to take a moderator instead because you are still, you are still, uh, you're, you're ready, you're closed team. Uh, so you need actually a, a third person that can guide you uh, in, in, a, in, in a role as a coach, a moderator, that can guide you in, in a process like that context mapping we did before. And actually I did that also uh, in, in the past with some startups where we, uh, where we sit together and, and rethought the things um, and, 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 and confront each of the team members in a way you cannot when you are alone because you, you have much, uh, too much trust and confidence already together. So it's, uh, it's good to, in that way to, to take a moderator and, and to confront and to let you confront with some techniques to, to, to look over some things and, and, and do also that context mapping to see if you're still in the right direction mm -hmm. or that you, for example, should add an, an additional team member uh, on, on a missing competence uh, uh, in, in your team or that you, sh that you should work with a partner to, to make new value propositions happen, whatever. But it should be a, 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 third, a third person that could help you in this process. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jason. Somebody else? Well, then... Henry, thank you very much. Uh, it's been very interesting. Uh, just to summarize, I just taking some, some notes. Uh, the first one that I really like is that design thinking is not just a tool or a methodology, it's a philosophy or a mindset. And I think that's very important because we usually think about design thinking as a tool, as something to, to draw or, or make a, a kind of seam or whatever. But I agree with you, it's, it's a way of thinking the, about things in a, different, in a different way. Absolutely. I really like the, the concept of effectuation. I have never heard about that and mm -hmm. I will surely go through it because I think it's, it's very interesting. And, and the example you, you gave us was very clarifying, talking about the, the, the fridge, I think it was very good. Uh -huh. and, and the other point that exploration is, is not about exploring ideas, but exploring problems. I Absolutely. think all this customer centricity, I think it's key for today's companies. And so I think that uh, even if it's through design thinking or even mm, through marketing, it's my, my feel, it's very important to have this uh, customer centricity in, in mind because it's, it's key to understand your customer's needs rather than uh, to try to sell your product or your service to customers that they, they may, maybe they don't, they don't have that, that need. Absolutely. So Henry, thank you very much. And to all of you here and online, thank you very much for joining us. We hope to have you again uh, in our next session. I think it's, you said it's in March. On the 4th and 5th of March. 4th mm -hmm. and 5th of March, again with Henry. So we hope to, to see you again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.